exit while it's moving. So let's try this out. All right, let's, let's do all these. So we just looked at all the pistons. All of them are good to go. They were all within spec. Um, so we're gonna just put this away and move on to the next part, which is boring out the block. So I bought this, um, I forgot what, what size it is. It's 81 to 83 millimeter bore, um, BGS Technic. BG1267 hone, dingleberry hone. What we're gonna do is we're going to first block off the oil passages, which are right here, the oil passages for the Vanos. And I'm going to maybe stuff, eh, I mean, we'll clean it out after. You wanna be very careful when honing the block to not hit the crank or the little, um, uh, nozzles that cool the pistons they're they're down there on the left so I'm gonna maybe shove some cardboard down in here so that when I'm honing it doesn't hit those pieces because we don't want to damage the crank as you can see the end of this does have a pretty sharp um, little tip to it so let's take a look okay so we got our cardboard down there measure uh, protecting our crankshaft and I got the hone out, it seems to fit perfectly. Um, as you can see, it's the exact uh, bore shape, 81, it said to 83 millimeters. And we're gonna put this on the end of a drill. And we're gonna douse it in oil and WD-40 and all that stuff. And all we're gonna do is drill in and out maybe 20 times, 30 times, just, just for 10 seconds. Um, I'm gonna turn the block so I can get it perfectly at a straight angle. We don't wanna be um, honing it at an angle. We want it to be go in and out and in and out. And don't stop the hone until it, you, you pull it completely out. You don't wanna stop the hone while it's in the, in the bore because the, the cross hatching pattern can be disturbed. So I'm gonna set this up really quickly and uh, let's try it out. So I just want to, um, wow, this, this light is not the greatest. I just wanted to show you guys um, what this looks like before honing it. You really should take the crankshaft out, but I don't have the bolts or the means to kind of do that right now. So we're just gonna cover up some stuff and hopefully, you know, just send it. Um, as you can see, I don't see any cross hatching um, on the cylinder walls. I mean, nothing. It's fully smooth. I was that's from the bore gauge. Those marks there are from the bore gauge. So we're gonna just put a very light, gentle cross hatching pattern um, into the to the block using these carbide using this flex hone or dingleberry hone it's these carbide um, pieces on on nylon um, sticks and uh, yeah let's try this out so I think what I'm gonna do is just do this for 10 seconds see what it looks like and then we'll try again. So first thing I'm gonna do is put uh, a bunch of oil on here. Yeah. I'm gonna oil this up as well. Just, I don't know if you're supposed to oil this up, but uh, you can use WD-40. Um, I'm just using some 5W. 5W30 oil, and then here goes nothing. You have to start it. Um, 
I'm going to look at my phone, maybe set a timer, and we'll just do 10 seconds first. You should do 30 seconds normally, but we'll just do 10 seconds and see what happens. You want to put it on for, uh, you want it to be, you know, the full speed of the, you want it to be going quite quickly, full speed of the, um, full speed of the drill. So let's go. You don't want to be, you want to enter while it's moving and then exit while it's moving. So let's try this out. your rag in there. Let me get a light. Because it'll be all kind of gunky like that. I'm going to clean this out and then So it just scraped it up. I'm gonna now measure and see how much material we actually took off. And uh, maybe do it again, maybe not, I'm not sure, but the cross hatching pattern looks way better. Sorry. Maybe I'll show it like this, compared to this one. And this is just to get the rings to stick again to set. So I can't even measure how much material that took off. It didn't take off anything. So we're going to try to do this 20 seconds, 30 seconds um, to get a better finish. Now you can use a cloth, maybe a cloth would be better, but um, I like the fact that the dingleberry hone, the, the flex hone, isn't going to go hit anything at all with that piece of cardboard in there. All right, let's put some oil in the cylinder. Flex hone already has some oil on it. Okay. I'm going to set a timer just so I know how much time's going by. Let's try it for 20 seconds. And there you go. I think on the way out, I'm going to go pull it out a bit slower next time because it seems to make the cross hatches wider here. All right, let's, let's do all these. We've cleaned up the engine block. It looks pretty good. There's still a little tiny bit of a lip at the very, very top, but um, I'm okay with that. Um, I've doused, I've cleaned everything really well and doused it in um, WD-40 uh, just to keep uh, keep the moisture off of the cylinder walls. I know that aluminum doesn't corrode, but just to, I don't know, just to make sure. Well, that worked out really well. Now that all the pistons are clean, the grooves are clean, the holes are clean, everything looks pretty good from, from my perspective. Nah, there's a little bit more there that I could get out. I'll go over these just one more time to make sure before I put the rings in. We're gonna now turn our attention to the block. I'm going to start to clean off this old gasket material. Um, 
the gasket material really, there's not much of it there. So what I've got here is just a flat scraper and I'm gonna go around and gently try to scrape off this material as best as I can. And once, I also have some, uh, I also have one of those steel uh, foam brush kind of things to go over it and clean up edges and stuff like that. And I'll go get that. But we're gonna clean up this block, uh, make sure everything looks good, um, clean the bores one more time, um, clean the crank, uh, make sure there's no grit or dirt or anything. Um, and then we're going to re-ring the pistons today. And we're going to put them in and put some oil on it and then wrap this up so that we can move on to the head that's over there underneath that plastic cover. So I'm going to get to this now. So I was trying this scraper tool and it's absolutely garbage. Like uh, I'm gonna put a picture of a better one and maybe even link one down below. What you want is a shorter um, blade that's kind of on an angle. Um, I watched a video about it. Uh, one guy was using it. I'd highly recommend getting that one instead of using that. This one, it's, this one's terrible. So I'm gonna move on to this other stuff that I bought which was uh, just a fine and coarse scotch red pad and steel wool, steel wool pad. So this is, this, uh, I forgot the guy's name, BMW, uh, Nathan's DIY garage or Nathan's BMW garage or whatever. He uses this stuff on heads and he said it worked really well. So let's grab a piece of it. Comes with two wool pads and let's just see course you'll have to clean off all this dust actually it's not really dust you have to clean this up anyway afterward so let's just see if this takes off any of this material what we want to do is clean up this gasket material so we get a really good flat mating surface with the block when we put the head on um, if not coolant can leak into your um, cylinders and you have a blown head gasket now because that's all that's this tiny little space is all that's separating you because there's not much separating um, the, the coolant passages from what from the piston so you have to clean this area up really nicely. Takes a bit of elbow grease. So I'm going to do this systematically, bit by bit. So now that I've cleaned everything as best as I can, I'm just going to uh, blow, blow out the cooling passages, these uh, passages that um, go back down to the oil pan from the head. I mean, honestly, I should hot tank this thing and make sure it's like 100% clean. Um, I don't know if I can do that because I don't have a hot tank. I don't have a parts washer. So we have to be very careful to spend as much time as we need to clean this thing up, especially the inner parts, 
um, the oil passages, the, the coolant gullies, um, even inside the, um, the head bolts thing. We need to do our best to clean this up as best as possible. So I think I'm gonna spend the rest of the day cleaning this you know, brake cleaning everything, cleaning, cleaning all the passages, passage, cleaning all the passages, cleaning the block, cleaning the cr crank, trying to get everything out of this thing. And then maybe do it again all over tomorrow. So for right now, I'm going to, um, yeah, just do this. I don't think you guys need to, to see all of this. Um, probably pretty boring anyway but I'm gonna clean for the next hour see how well that goes so hey everybody hope that information was useful for you uh, in the next video we're going to be taking a look at the new piston rings we're gonna be fitting them and sizing them in the bores to see the clearances to make sure that they're spot-on and there's no issues and then we're gonna put the piston rings on the pistons themselves and get them back in the car, hopefully in the next video or a couple of videos. So consider subscribing, it really helps the channel grow and if any of this information has been useful for you, it's a free way to support the channel. So hope your guys' rebuild projects are going well and we'll see you guys in the next video.